इस आस्पेक्ट ऑफ ओजोन विच आर इम्पोर्टेंट फ्रॉम यूजीसी नेट एग्जामिनेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू सो लेट्स टॉक वेरी बेसिक अबाउट ओजोन सो यू कैन सी इन द पिक्चर दैट वी हैव शोन द ऑल्टीट्यूड ऑन वाई एक्सिस अलोंग विद दैट we have shown concentration of ozone on x axis and you are looking at a peak which is around something around at an altitude of 25 to 30 km so this is the ozone maxima or the maximum concentration of ozone is found in stratosphere at a height of 25 to 30 km this is one of the important aspect then in stratosphere around 90% of ozone lies in stratosphere and 10% lies in troposphere this is also one of the important question and the ozone which is there in stratosphere it is a beneficial ozone which protect us from uv radiation right then if you talk about troposphere then 10% of the ozone is in troposphere and that also in not all the parts in the region which are more industrialized like we should need we will be requiring the precursor for the formation of ozone now coming to the measurement of ozone so generally ozone is measured in terms of a unit which is called as thompson unit because the ozone first time it was measured with the thompson spectrophotometer or thompson <coughs> spectrophotometer so that's why the unit is dobson and one dobson unit is basically if we take a 0.01 mm thick column of ozone and the ozone concentration containing in that or i must say that one dobson unit is equal to 0.01 mm of ozone or the simpler way to uh, remember it is like 1 mm is equal to 100 dobson unit right a 1 mm ozone column thickness is equal to 100 dobson unit so 1 dobson unit equivalent to a layer of ozone which is 0.01 mm thick at stp stp what do you mean by stp standard temperature pressure which is one atmosphere and temperature is equal to 0 degree celsius or 273 kelvin this needs to be remember which is important from examination point of view now looking to the other aspects if i talk about ozone then one dobson unit is also equal to a layer of ozone which is 0.01 mm thick at stp and one dobson unit is also equal to 1 ppb of ozone means it is the same quantity where we have 1 ppb of ozone or 2.7 into 10 to the power 16 ozone molecules per centimeter square so that could be remember the relationship is important as far as the ozone is concerned and you can <coughs> so now we will talk something about the distribution of ozone across the globe like how the pole was and equator wise the concentration of ozone is there so you need to remember one thing that 100 dobson unit is equal to 1 mm so 1 mm is equal to 100 dobson unit if you see the distribution of ozone over equator or pole so let's start with the equator so at equator it is something around 3 mm which stand which corresponds to 300 dobson unit right or 2.9 mm which is 290 dobson unit and maximum concentration is generally find out at uv at equator so we have maximum amount of ultraviolet radiation at equator and here we have 300 dobson unit as we move towards pole so the concentration is something around 3.5 mm which leads to 350 dobson unit of the ozone at pole we have 0.4 so minimum amount of uv will reach here so as all of you know that basically the uv c is responsible for the construction of ozone and uvb is for production of ozone generally so this is required so here we have minimum uv 
would reach at pool and here we have 400 dots in unit of ozone which is 0.4 centimeter or what mm so concentration of ozone as we can observe increase from equator to pole this is a very important observation that as you move from equator to pole the concentration of ozone keep on increasing as you can observe 3 mm 3.5 mm then 4 mm so this is a general trend and the reason being that minimum amount of ozone minimum amount of uv sorry is found at pole which is uvc which is responsible for the construction of ozone so you can see that uh, something around at pole 400 option unit at equator 300 option unit right now let's come to the now let's come to the ozone hole so the ozone hole over antarctic is defined as an area in which the ozone is less than 220 dobson unit this is a standard definition decline in springtime ozone otherwise known as ozone hole so ozone concentration is more in springtime which is a february to april time in comparison to fall time which is october and ozone all of you know formed at wavelength lambda 242 nanometer and this is one of the question which they generally ask and very nicely explain in our literature also that let us suppose ozone is struck by a photon and split it into two ozone radicals where delta h is positive 498 kilojoule per mole delta h is positive means the reaction is endothermic and this oxygen molecule have absorbed 498 kilojoule per mole of energy so they will ask you what wavelength is required to photolyze this oxygen atom into the O radicals. So we can easily calculate that thing with the help of a relation which is sorry E is equal to Hc by lambda that is Planck's equation where H is the Planck constant and C is <coughs> speed of light which is nothing but 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second and this product of H into C can be easily remembered that it is 1240 electron volt nanometer or 12400 electron volt armstrong so now it's very simple we will equate the energy which HC by lambda energy was given as 498 kilo kilojoule per mole so for a mole mole we will put 6.022 10 to the power 24 molecules and on the right hand side we will put up hc by lambda and when you calculate it comes out to be something around 239 or 242 nanometer so the wavelength required for this reaction of striking a photon to oxygen getting converted into o, o radical is 240 or 242 nanometer so if you will see the value 240 to 242 nanometer will fall where it's something around uvc so all of you know that uva is 320 to 400 nanometer and uvp is 280 to 320 and uvc is 240 to 100 nanometer so then you can see we have classified uv radiations as uva b c so all of you can see in the picture that visible it's something around 400 to 700 nanometer then if you talk about uva which is least dangerous type of radiation in uv radiation ranges from 320 to 400 then we have uvb which is 280 to 320 nanometer and then you have uvc which is something around 280 to 200 or 240 nanometer and some of the books write 100 to 280 nanometer is uvc which is most lethal if you see in terms of energy as we move from uva to uvc the frequency increase wavelength decrease and hence the energy is more so in energy if we talk about in terms of energy uvc is having more energy most lethal followed by b and followed by a if you talk about in terms of having to which radiations will travel more so we will see the wavelength so uva is more in terms of wavelength followed by uvb followed by uvc and all of you know the energy content wise uvc is more than uvb more than uva this relationship needs to be remembered amount reached to the earth atmosphere or amount reached to the earth surface 
followed the order of UVA, followed by UVB, followed by UVC as in the order of their wavelength. Now, we will be talking something about the effects of ozone depletion and why we cry about that ozone is depleting and ozone hole is there. So there needs to be some significance. So the effects of ozone depletion, we will discuss now. So the first effect would be, it will cause increase in incident of UVB, which result in two cataract, which is a problem in eyes or melanoma, which is also called as skin cancer, which damage to nucleic acid, DNA, RNA, it is also considered to be causing mutation to the genetic material, DNA and RNA, and reduction in photosynthesis is also called as loss of crop yield and productivity, which is a very well documented right so it is observed that the one percent decrease in ozone layer will lead to two percent more uvb reaching to the earth surface so this facts need to remember that if we decrease one percent of ozone layer then two percent more uv will be will be uvb will be reaching earth because they reach in the order of uv a b and c then uvc is used in water treatment so that fact needs to be remembered right so water treatment generally deploy uvc because it is antibacterial antifungal for sterilization process so then due to more penetration of uv radiations so uvc is used in water treatment due to more penetration of uv radiation it is used it can kill bacteria and all now we'll be studying the effects of different type of uv a b and c one by one so let's think about uv a which ranges from 320 to 400 nanometer having the largest wavelength but least energy it is also called as black light right black light so which is invisible in nature it causes tanning of skin cause tanning of skin, photo aging of skin, skin cancer which is also called as melanomas induce vitamin D synthesis in body so it induces vitamin D synthesis in body now coming to UVB it's called reddening of skin melanoma skin cancer cataract which is one of the dangerous problem of eyes snow blindness snow blindness is caused by UVB right then we have suppression of immune system and vitamin d synthesis this is also the effect of uvb it suppresses your immune system and vitamin d synthesis then we have sun protection factor which is spf is basically spf is basically a rating of sunscreen which refers to their ability to block uvb rays so spf stands for sun protection factor so how much these sunscreens, cosmetic products block UVB. B. That is there in SPF number, right? Then UVC is most damaging. Remember this thing. UVC is the most dangerous in terms of energy, also lethality, also most lethal because having highest amount of energy, right? Then oh, this is most dangerous and used in water treatment. That is one of the important application. It practically does not reach to surface of earth because the content is least. You can say that 99% of the UVA reach on the earth's surface and 1% of the UV B and C because the order is UVA, B and C when we talk about the reasoning of the UV radiation on earth surface so 99 percent times it is uva which reaches the earth surface and one percent of the time uvb and c which is well documented in our literature so 99 percent the uva reach on earth one percent of uvb and c combinedly reach to the earth surface if we talk about chemotherapy the cobalt 60 which is used as a source of gamma radiation chemotherapy and no uv radiation is used in chemotherapy which is one of the biggest myth in most of the aspirants brain so 99 percent the uv is composed of uva only which reaches on earth 
and you can easily remember this that u visible is 400 to 700 nanometer then uva 320 to 400 nanometer then uvb 280 to 320 uvc 280 